Westworld Season 2 just premiered and it was insane. This episode was filled with major amounts of foreshadowing and mystery leading into this season. I'm super excited and in this video I'm going to break down 5, maybe 6 things that were easily missed and go into detail about what they mean. Alright, first up, and this was not something that was necessarily easily missed, but it puts to dead rumors that Robert Ford may in fact still be alive. When Bernard and others arrive at the camp, they first go into, you know, sort of in inspecting and seeing what's going on, and Bernard immediately walks up to Robert, and they flip over his corpse, and you can see maggots crawling in his eye sockets. This confirms that that was, in fact, a human body that was shot in the back of the head last season by Dolores. I, along with many other theorizers, you know, sort of predicted that Robert used a host body and that's what was actually shot. And the real Robert Ford would be alive and reveal himself later on in season two. Well, that's not the case. According to those maggots and, you know, just from what we could tell about host decomposition and human decomposition, hosts don't really decay. And when they die, their body sort of looks, you know, exactly how they did when they were alive. But humans, obviously they decay and there was all types of necrosis and everything going on along all of the dead bodies that they were walking across when they walked up to ford on the stage so once they got to ford you could see that yes he had, he was suffering from or his body rather was suffering from you know the effects of necrosis as well as his face just actually rotting out so this sort of confirms that robert ford is in fact dead and that the only chance of us seeing him is going to be through flashbacks or through another host version of ford Speaking of other host versions of Ford, we actually got confirmation from young Ford that this is a new game that the guests are now playing. The man in black, William, goes up to, you know, try to get some water and he ends up coming across the young version of Robert Ford. Now, one thing that I'll mention later on in this video is the fact that there's a glitch going on here and young Robert Ford's voice is actually sort of like phasing in and out. It almost sounds like a deep Android voice on top of the young voice and the two are sort of meshing together at for this adding for this super creepy effect, which I honestly think, you know, there's a little bit more to that. And like I said, I'll discuss it later on in the video. But once he reveals that this game is is no longer Arnold's game and it now is in fact Robert's game we are learned that it's called the door so last season the heavy theme was the actual season itself the first season was called the maze and it was all about the host journey to consciousness they had to work through this maze to discover the center of the maze was their actual consciousness and this was actually set up by Arnold one of the original founding members of the park now in season two Ford has written the narrative for everything and this season two is actually called the door So I have sort of you know, just a little bold prediction here I feel like the door can symbolize many different things One of those things being and I think the main goal being is the door that leads to the outside world the door that leads out of the park So maybe by the end of the season you know, with last season, we had Dolores discovering her consciousness and almost every single other host in the park discovering her consciousness. Maybe this season two will end with them actually exiting the park and going into the real world. If this is the case, the season being called The Door sort of makes a whole bunch of sense. But what ends up happening between young Robert Ford and William, the man in black, is that William ends up shooting him in the face. My guess for the reason why he did this is because young Robert Ford told something William, told something to William that he didn't want to hear which was the fact that, you know, this is his game now and things are totally different. I honestly feel like there is a little bit of animosity that we've yet to sort of see between the man in black, William and Robert Ford. So maybe something happened initially in their past around 30 years ago that made Robert and the man in black sort of, you know, get off on the wrong foot. And this is where that animosity comes in. But also, if you remember last season, there was a conversation between the man in black and Robert Ford and Teddy in which the man in black tried to take a step at literally uh robert and this was stopped by teddy you know this was sort of like robert flexing to the man in black look i have ultimate power you can't really touch me here um and this is sort of like you know a precursor to after that maybe he still has that frustration for not being able to make ford bleed a little bit and this is why he ends up killing the young host of robert ford i honestly think there are many different versions of whether it's different stages in Robert Ford's life, but there are many different host, host versions of Ford, and I think we're gonna see more of those in season two. Another thing that I noticed was the fact that when the captain and Bernard actually discover this massive sea, this was something that, you know, they they discussed upon each other, or they discussed it with each other, and they said there's no way that Robert could have done this without them noticing, and Bernard has asked several times, 
what where did this come from you know what is this and he honestly doesn't know one of the side effects which you know what i'm not going to touch on that yet i'll say that for a little bit but i honestly think that the mystery behind this it is that it was being built right before our eyes last season if you remember right when we had the conversation between robert ford and with charlotte and she you know came out to him when he was like having the big construction project going was the fact that he had this massive machine that is used for terraforming coming up and it sort of just crawled over a mountain now there's no way that you need something this big just to dig up a church i know it was an entire town that he dug up but there's no way that this massive machine was used to do that i think that massive machine was used to pump water from one area to another mainly there's this super popular theory that Westworld is actually taking place on a giant peninsula sort of like a continent way off out in you know almost like the middle of nowhere similar to Australia like it's off on its own and that's why you know you have these massive parks that are within it not just Westworld but also Shogun World and the only way that it's big enough is it's basically just giant peninsula slash continent and it's all in the middle of nowhere so what Ford may have been doing is using this terraforming machine to dig giant holes in routed water to this area which we now have this brand new sea in the middle of the park okay so now on to sort of some of the more deeper mysteries uh bernard actually ends up leaking what appears to be brain fluid and we're shown multiple times in this episode something that we were not shown in season one and that's the actual brain of the host we see in the very beginning of the episode this pseudo doctor who i'm assuming has a very similar skill set to bernard himself he actually takes out the brain or the the cpu if you will of one of these hosts and when he does it you realize that this is the giant machine that Peter Abernathy had all of that information that the Delos Corp need all of that was uploaded into his brain and this is actually what that is so I think one of the main points in this episode of showing it twice to us was later on when Bernard has the same fluid that this sort of CPU and you know giant hard drive is, is sitting in that same fluid is leaking from Bernard's head I think the main point of the show showing us this was so that we'd have you know a little bit of a, like oh okay like a light bulb will go off when it's shown leaking from Bernard's head but one of the side effects that you see on the tablet when bernard is in the base with charlotte and they you know when they make it to that area where they're somewhat safe and that's when we first get to meet the drone host which i will be doing a theory video on if you guys want me to let me know down in the comment section if you want me to do a theory video on to why these drone hosts were shown and you know if we'll get to see them do some insane incredible action this coming season i honestly think we will but let me know down in the comment section if you want me to you know touch on that more in a separate video but anyway in that base bernard actually learns that some of the side effects of him having this critical condition in his head is that he could have cognitive disson cognitive dissonance which is basically another term for the reveries we learned that last season which we actually learned about bernard first getting this injury or we find out that this is a side effect from when arnold had bernard shoot himself in the head as a command so these reveries or these cognitive dissonances are you know a side effect of bernard having all that trauma done to his head and he wasn't actually fixed properly if you remember the same doctor that does all the work on mave is the one that fixed him up and he actually said this will do like you know sort of letting us know that he didn't do his best job but he said this is good enough now I looked it up and we do have you know a fluid that's around in our brain cavity but nothing similar to this I can imagine if I have to you know a sort of a rough theorization of what this is is this could be a liquid that's put in there to sort of you know we have crystals in our ears that help us keep our balance and this could be something similar to that like a fluid that is you know holds the control system in place and makes sure the Hosts are look. I'm I'm stretching it here. Like I said, this is like a super rough theorization. But this sort sort of could be a fluid to maybe help them keep their grasp on things, or it could also and you know help prevent the uh, actual like module that controls all of their I guess their nervous system. I don't even know what they call this thing. I guess their brain. It could help keep it in place and sort of make them more aware of their surroundings. Or it could be a fluid that was put in there to, you know, that's super conductive. We do know that these robots, from what I can tell, the hosts don't need to be recharged or anything. So it makes sense that if they have some sort of terminal maybe like internal battery system that recharges itself naturally naturally in one of the places in their body that takes up the most power could be their brain so this is why this fluid is more present there and it's sort of like powering their entire nervous system i have no idea you guys let me know what you think down below in the comment section but i will say that the fact that the fluid is leaking from his ear and one of the side effects is cognitive dissonance this means that you know and also he skips around in times like memory loss and some of the other things where the side effects um 
But I think this is why we get that initial time skip in the beginning where we find Bernard right after uh, the whole meltdown with Dolores and every all of the entirety of the guest and the executives getting shot last season. And then we also skip, you know, to like right where it starts off, which was, I think, initially uh, one of the random people that were in the background when Bernard is first discovered laying on the beach, they mentioned that it's been 11 days since the event took place. So we're kind of skipping around a little bit. And this leads me into one of the last things that I noticed, which is the fact that Bernard tells the captain that he killed all those people that were shot in the lake. Now, I know it was kind of hard to tell what exactly he said. And I went back and replayed it like three or four times, but he definitely says I killed them. Now, what he could be meaning here is that he, the original version of him, which is Arnold, he you know enacted this plan to sort of make them all become conscious so because they became conscious this is what happened and it resulted in all of them dying so that's what he means when he said he killed all of them or he could literally mean that he killed them meaning like we haven't seen it yet but at some point during those 11 days from when he meets up with charlotte and when he meets up with the captain at some point he was taken over or like dolores took over his body and maybe had him shoot all these people that, that doesn't really make sense i think it's more of the first option the fact that he knows that the original Arnold, his actions led to all of these, you know, hosts that have achieved consciousness, his actions led to them indirectly or directly being killed. One super last quick thing that I noticed that might be nothing, and I could just be reading a little bit too much into into it but i'm gonna go ahead and say throw on your tinfoil caps but it was a little bit of a weird scene when arnold first met the captain the captain's voice sort of skipped and it's almost like he said a trigger word that was supposed to i guess make bernard go under his control because his voice cracks up and it seems like bernard's the only one who hears it one thing that i noticed was it it was very similar to how young robert's ford's voice was skipping around and just going up and down and sounding very demonic but then also sounding like it has a child's voice on top of it this happens for a split second with the captain and bernard on the beach now what this could mean is that the captain is a secret host that is you know could be working for delos itself and he's sent there to sort of just exterminate everything and help charlotte find peter abernathy or it could mean that this captain is an actual human and he's aware of the fact that bernard is in fact a host and maybe he's somehow in line with some of arnold's plans i don't really know you guys let me know what you think about that down below in the comment section all right i'm gonna be wrapping it up there i want to thank you all so so much for watching if you want me to do an in-depth scene by scene breakdown in a live stream let me know down below in the comment section i will be live streaming after episode two next sunday right at 10 30 so make sure you tune into my channel turn your notifications on and make sure you're subscribed so that way you can come and take part of that live stream discussion like i said that will be at 10 30 eastern standard time basically right after the show goes off i I want to thank you all so so much again for watching the like goal for this video will be 422 also if you could please leave me a comment down below and let me know what you want to see covered in a future westworld video is there something that i missed that happened in the first episode that you think deserves a video all in of itself and that you want me to make that video leave a comment let me know down below super special shout out to every single member of my patreon family over on patreon.com slash your hunts reviews without you all these kinds of videos would not be possible and i want to thank you all so so much for doing what you do my name's mark and this has been sir hunts reviews two quick things and then i'm out of here the first thing is the fact that i plan on making three episodes or three videos per episode of westworld for this season if you guys want me to do that make sure you like this video and then make sure you share it also i noticed that bernard discovered that the host the drone host was actually taking dna from a park host and they were storing it in what seems to be a giant file or storage system he ends up confronting charlotte aka tessa thompson aka valkyrie about this and she sort of just shuffles it under the rug this opens a massive pandora's not even box, a Pandora's hole of just insane theories that could affect not only season two of Westworld, but also the incoming future seasons. Let me know down below in the comment section if you guys want me to make a theory video on what this could mean now that we know that Westworld actually keeps DNA from guests on file.